So let's pull apart the power supply section now. I've put the cover back on here. That's bound to have jinxed it. It's bound to have something go wrong there now. And then we won't be able to see what goes wrong because of the smoke could be contained. You won't be able to see where it came from. <laughs> I've had this thing powered up once already. So I'm not too concerned about this stuff blowing up because I know it was kind of working. But obviously we need to look at this bit because this is where the next problem is likely to be. So it does have indicator LEDs in here. They're actually marked on this case. Primary over voltage, plus five volt over voltage, non-isolated over voltage, and isolated over voltage. So the indicator's on this board here. So it does have its own monitoring built in. But right now, I don't care about that. I just want to pull it apart, inspect it, check things, see if I can see any problems. I'm going to start in the same direction as I'm going to start at the back this time. So I'm just basically moving across the unit. I'll do this big board here last. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that, it's got a battery on it. Ooh, three volt lithium cell. We need to check that. It's got some dip tents on there as well. This has got this color banding system. I'm not sure what these are. They could be tantalums. Just using color banding designations instead of the numbering printed on them. They look like tantalums, but uh, I know that color banding was a system that was used years ago. I just don't really come across it very often. Anyway, let's have a close look. We'll be careful about not putting the ball down, shorting out in the battery in case it's still okay. Tents look fine. Connector is oxidized like the yellow ones are. Back of the board. Never been touched. And it's factory. So let's check this battery, it's bound to be flat in it. Is it still alive? It is, but it's backwards. Why is it backwards? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. It is 3 volts. 3.01 volts. That battery still looks okay. That's good. I really expected that to be the other way around. That's coming as negative. But it is marked positive there. That's weird. Okay, so it is marked positive. That caught me out. Watch out for that one. But yeah, battery's still good. Excellent. So let's clean this board up, put it back in. So I'll clean those cancer board edges up. So reseat the card a few times, clean the cancer up again. It's all looking good. So we've got three boards left. Apart from the main logic board, the main board, well the main motherboard I suppose. Which does have some stuff on it, but not much. Obviously the main regulators and stuff here as well, so something I could do after I've done these power supply boards and check those out is actually do some resistance measurements or something on the outputs of these regulators and check for any shorts. Could potentially do that. Let's get this next board out which has a connector on here. Where's that going to? Next board over, so let's unplug this connector. So, this is your regulator board, IRF 440, and this board is visually looking okay. Back of the board is also untouched. So, it looks like I've been lucky with this one, hasn't it? Much in the way of repair work, which is always a good thing. Clean these up. Actually, I'll stop recording now. You get the idea. So, let's pull out the board next to it, because it's got these connectors to plug in between the two boards. So, I thought I'd just do both boards at once, and then I can put them both together back at the same time. This board's had some rework over here. I don't know what that is yet, I haven't turned it around. Has had some work and it's still flux residue. And those are just wires, wire connections from this transformer here. And that's an interesting setup. Hmm. I think this board will need to require a closer look than the first one. Seems to have a capacitor on there and some bits and pieces. And this is a board which got referenced a lot on the EV blog forum about having bad parts. Remember C10 was it? Or CR200 or something like that? I think they mentioned as being a problematic diode. Anyway, it's a number they mentioned. We'll have a look around it. I might just test all the diodes on this board because they, these are known for being problematic. So I'm just going to do a quick go over this board. I'll actually do some testing. All right, let's check these, see if it makes sense. Open, open. Make sure it actually does show. Yes, it does. Open, yep. Open, 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 open. That's good. Open, open, open. Sort these around. The other direction. 0.56, yep. 0.42. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.42, 0 0.56, 0 0.2, it's quite low that one, must be shocky, 0 0.56, 0 0.59, 0 0.59, so far so good. Got another one up here, it's 0.52 and something, it's got a capacitor near it so it's probably affecting it. Bridge up here but looks of it, 0 0.58, 0 0.58, big gap, yep that's looking fine I think. Yep, open, open. So far so good, got some more down here, 0 0.58, 0 0.58, open, 
open, open, open, 407.4, oh it's looking pretty good so far, open, 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 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, it's looking good, the dies look fine, so that's a bonus, nothing looks like it's blown, we've got that regulator there or something, that's showing a short between those two pins, those two pins there are showing a short which is interesting, I need to find out what it is, CR100, I think that was something which is a common failure point. Ah, oh, no, hold on. It goes to these windings here. It's going to transform the windings, so the windings will be showing up. So it's probably fine. It's going to transform the windings, so the windings will be showing up. So that's 11 milliohms resistance. Hmm, is that a short? <laughs> the only way to know for sure is to take the part out, but I think it's probably fine. I might just go around and clean up some of this flux. There's a flux over here as well on these other wire connections. Obviously, what I did wires, they just don't clean up the flux probably factory so I'll clean that up anyway and we'll come on but I think it's basically right I'll check the capacitor so I'll just test this capacitor here it's a 2000 microfarad cap it came out at 2.1 millifarad and ESR and stuff like that was fine so that cap at the moment is at least still still good 50 volt 2000 microfarad yeah I'll do a capacitor I could potentially put in there if I need to but I think it's fine I don't think I'm going to worry about it right now I've got two more caps up here as well which are 100 microfarad that's a 0 to 50 volt interesting both the same so I'll measure those. I should make sure I discharge first. They probably are, but let's do it anyway. Just to be sure. That's 224 microfarad. Are they in parallel? Yes, they are. It's going to be hard to measure them like that. Um, ESR in parallel. It's 0.3 ohms. Dissipation 0.04. They're probably fine. I don't suspect those at the moment. They're probably all right. Clean this board up. Put it back in. So let's have a close look at this board. And I've had a look around the... These all seem to be dated 1986, so that seems to be the year of this particular unit. It appears to be 1986, even though the serial number says 85. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Now I've checked the caps to make sure there's no charge on the caps. They seem to be fine. And you can see here from the traces, these are three terminal capacitors. I don't like three terminal caps. I don't like three or four terminal caps. I prefer two terminals. I just find them awkward to deal with. Anyway, so it looks like they are just paralleled up here and here as well. They are paralleled up there, as are those. So I think... They all appear to be paralleled up in those two terminals. So I've only got to measure across those two anyway. So it's effectively like a two terminal cap anyway. So let's get these tested. We shall see if I can get across these terminals. It's 466 microfarad, 0 0.01 dissipation. Being in circuit means you probably will get the difference values in here as well. It does affect them. That's 456.01 dissipation, 476.01 dissipation, 466.02 dissipation. Okay, 921. Interesting. That's a big difference. 0 0.02, 921, 0 0.02, one in parallel. That could be. 466.02 and 413.03. So this one here looks different as these two here. So these three appear different. So that's a 440 microfarad. They're all 440s. These two here measuring high, but it looks like they might be in parallel. And this one's measuring low. So what did I see those with? 922. So that's about 460. So yeah, okay. So those are in parallel. But that one there is measuring slightly low. Let's measure it again. So 415, 413. It's like 10% out. Getting towards 10% out. So what's that about 8% or something? Might be alright. It's also dated 1984. The other ones are dated 1986. So it's a different batch. That's from an older batch. So that's probably why that one's different. It may be nothing. Then we just do the same check with ESR. And see if it's the arthrose or anything, it probably won't. Probably won't show anything really different. 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, that one's slightly higher. 0.11. So that one is definitely worse than the rest. 0 0.08. So that older one, the one that's two years older, does appear to be worse. These are 0 0.03 because they're basically hard. Okay. I'm suspicious about this one slightly. Just slightly. So 440 microfarad, 50 volt. So I was checking diodes, I've already started, and now I remember I should be recording this video. So let's check in the diodes on here, and they're so far so good. It's normal to get a bit of a conduction and a beep when you first start, when you've got capacitors around them. As long as it drops off and it stops, and you can see the capacitor charging, then it's nothing wrong with it. Let's flip it around the other way. 
just check the other way. 0.7. Again, because of capacitor charging, about 0.7. Point seven, point seven, point seven, or point seven five, but you know, close enough. Point seven, point seven. All the dials look fine. This capacitor here looked very slightly lower than the rest. That's an older cap. These all dated nineteen eighty six. This one's dated nineteen eighty four. Is it an issue? Nah, yeah, probably not. I'm not really too worried. It's still kind of okay. It's not really like it's way out and obviously bad. It's just different. So I'm just going to leave that on the line. In a way, that's a bit disappointing. It means I now have to consider what else could be going on. Down on this board, down this hedge, behind these rig layers, is a whole bunch of diodes. So I need to measure all those. Yeah, I can measure all from this side. There's a little bit of dust around here, so I might just give that bit of a brush off and I'll come back. And then we'll start measuring those, make sure the diodes are okay. So I've got this meter out, so I can show you a bit more easily when I'm doing the recorded video, so let's just start probing around. That's looking fine. That looks fine. That appears fine. Fine. That's fine. It's fine. Fine. It's fine. That one's right. That one's right. That one's right. That's fine. Let's do it around the other way and check them again. I'll come back, but it looked like they're basically looking okay. There's no shorts at least. Not so far. Got other ones to check yet. Actually, I think we'll record this one. The meter makes a nice satisfying beep sound. This one's around the other way, so it should do nothing. Ish, maybe. Oh, 0.3. That wasn't what I was expecting. Are they back to back? Might be. Oh good. Alright, check these ones. Oh, that's interesting. Other way. Hmm. That's interesting. Check this one. That's fine. Because of capacitors and stuff around them, and anything else around them, could be getting some other readings, but that's not short, and they're different each way, so they're probably alright. This one. It's interesting. That is CR200. What is CR200? So this short we've got across this diode here, I can't determine yet whether it's the diode or whether it's the capacitor which is behind it. There's a C200 behind that transistor there, because there's a voltage regulator section I see. Um, so it's either the diode or that capacitor or the voltage regulator itself. One of those three things is bad. Don't know which one yet, so it's going to have to be by process of elimination. So one trick I have used in the past, and sometimes does work, is you can measure across the resistance of the device, measure resistance of that one, measure resistance of something else, measure resistance of the other thing, and whichever one's got the lowest resistance is obviously where the short is, because that's the hardest short. You know, you're talking milliohm differences. But in this case, the reading is fluctuating very slightly, it's drifting upwards, so I can't actually see consistently whether one is lower than the other, so fortunately I can't do it that way. So I'm going to have to do it by lifting a part out, retesting, and do it as a process elimination that way. I don't know, it could be either of those three parts, but it could even be something those are going to. It might be another card, which I've already put back in, which has got a short, because it's 29 ohms. So 29 ohms could be a distance thing to us going to another card somewhere. Actually, I'm inclined to lift boards out before I do that. Now, I've already eliminated all the power supply boards. All the, had all these boards out, you can see I've got some here already. I lifted the other board out, so all this section here, this block, has all been eliminated already. I'm actually tempted to lift this cover back off and pull those cards out. Tempted. I didn't see any signs of any problems in any of these boards. But just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. I'm going to pull cards out, because that's the least disruptive thing to start off with. So if I pull cards out and it doesn't go away, then I know I need to start lifting parts over here. It may mean more work to do, but it may mean that I can isolate a fork down to a particular card at the same time. So we'll do it that way. So I've lifted these boards out, they're all sort of resting there, so hopefully they're not actually making contact, they could be, I'll try and move them around though. So let's stick this across here. And we still have 29 ohms. Lift that board, no difference. That board, that one, that one, that one. No difference. So it could well be here then. But 
at least we know it's probably not one of the Because it could even be, if this is blown, it could be blown as a result of something else happening further downstream, right? And what could happen is I could find, oh, this is blown, I repair it, power it up, and it blows again because something downstream is stressing it. So that's another part of the process of why I want to check the cards, because if there's still a, a fault present on these cards, which I didn't identify by pulling them out and looking at them, then it could re-break it after I fixed it. And you know what I mean? What I said about putting that uh, cover back on again, that metal cover over here, saying it's probably jinxed it. That's another reason I want to put the cars back out. <laughs> let's lift the diode first, we'll try that. So I just lifted the diode up, after eliminating all the cards, so there's a problem. Lift the diode up, lifting it out, and it broke in half. Now either that's bad luck, and I put some stress on it stat, or it was actually blown. Let's remeasure it, and we're still getting 21 ohms. It wasn't the diode. So that diode comes back to being a 1N4004 common diode, not unusual at all. I've got a bunch of them. I've got to clean these holes out so I can get it in there. I might try a bit of braid first, see if braid will do it with some flux and see if it will suck through the board or not. Give it some more heat to help it get through the board. And my soul actually needs, this needs cutting off, it's awful. I put flux on because it helps it to work. Well, it looks like it's done the job actually. It's looking pretty good. Looks like they're clear. Keep it clean. I actually see a line on the board there. I'm not sure if it's a crack or not. No, it's fine. It's just where the uh, solder mask edges. This looks like a line. It's fine. We've got this plastic shield here, which is going to be in the way, of course. Because, you know, who doesn't want to have stuff in the way? Let's try and work around it without having to take it off. Though I might have to take it off anyway. Yeah. Now I'm going to solder this through from the top. Because it will be easier, and it will flow through. I'll get the camera a bit closer in a second. Now you can see what I'm doing. Yep, that looks fine. That's flow through just fine. Anyway, so I replaced that diode unnecessarily because it wasn't actually blown. But, you know, it broke. So, I don't know, maybe it was slightly weak or something, or who knows. But I think it's probably just me lifting the thing up is what broke it rather than anything else. Was it that replaced? We'll maybe measure it just in case something's changed, but I don't think it would have done. Still 21 ohms. So, now we look at the capacitors around the back here. Let's lift that out, see if we can avoid snapping that one in half. So now I'm going to lift this capacitor up, which is just behind there. I can get it from the front here and leave it from the back to lift it. So let's try that attempt. Let's put some fresh solar on it first. Give my chances, well, improve my chances. That's what I'm trying to say. I've got some solder from the back. Fresh solder always helps. And if this doesn't work, we've got some other problem. Potentially. I mean, it's just measuring wrong. Is it really bad? I don't know, but it probably is. <laughs> right, it's a capacitor lifted out. Let's remeasure. Twenty-nine ohms. Not a capacitor. 